After two years of self-education, teaching hundreds of people and starting a bunch of communities online around XR design, I'm officially an XR designer and it's pretty sweet. Now, I will talk about how I got to where I'm at today in just a second, but I really want this video to be focused around the difficulty of landing an XR design job in today's climate, what people are looking to hire for, and if I was gonna be hiring, what I would be looking for. Now, this is the, my first vlog. I've tried to do this a million and a half times. It always felt incredibly cringe, but today, I swear to God, I'm gonna do it. So if you like this, let me know with a comment down below, like, subscribe, and let's shoot the shit and walk around the park. So if you don't know me by now, my name is Daniel. I've been a product designer for about 11 years. I started designing mobile applications back in 2010 and done everything from working as a design systems designer to being a product designer at agencies, startups, and large tech companies. And um, I think there's a time in every designer's or creative's life where they sit back and ask like, is what I'm doing fulfilling creatively, socially? And during my eight or nine year mark, I found myself kind of in a stupor. See, I was getting paid a lot of money, but I really didn't feel fulfilled. So I decided to take my earnings. I'm gonna take about a month or two off to find myself. And what I found specifically is that traditional flat design was not for me. Now, a month or two after getting into Blender and getting obsessed with tutorials and seeing what people were making, I found myself in VR chat and everything started to click together. I started to see this broader vision of what the future of spatial design will bring the mass consumer and how products will change forever. And I saw it as vivid as I saw mobile apps back in the day before they were a big thing, except this felt even more tangible and even more powerful. Powerful. So I decided, okay, I'll just deplete all of my savings and learn XR design. However, there really was no content online about how to design for augmented or virtual reality in general. So I enrolled at an online school called Circuit Stream, and within like a week or two, um, I found that their content was not to my liking and I had to create my own curriculum. And I did that for about a month or two and then they asked me to teach full time. And so being able to teach about 100 to 200 students, I started to realize that a lot of the time I was giving towards the school was taken away from personal projects. So I left there, started a YouTube channel, um, started a Discord, and sooner or later, I got word that there was a small startup focused on XR design tools um, in San Francisco called Bezel. And um, I somehow weaseled my way in there. Yeah, let's go home and talk about Bezel. So while this transition is both cute and sick, um, I recorded this whole thing and it kind of just blew up in my face. So um, I just spent 10 hours at work and it's a day later. So if you see my little hair, it's a little longer than it was just a second ago. Anyway, what was work? That's a good transition, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Well, I work at Bezel. So what is Bezel? Well, essentially we are a product design tool for XR designers, and that includes augmented and virtual reality. Now we were started by three engineers and designers from Meta, and in February of 2023, I was their first design hire. And since then, we have really found a really strong signal in XR prototyping and design. Now we have moved incredibly quickly and there's only nine of us at the moment, but our goal is to create an accessible and powerful prototyping tool for XR that can be adopted by anyone anywhere. And because of that, there has been a lot of nuanced design challenges that we've had to face. And let me talk about those real quick. So the first thing we had to tackle was accessibility. Now accessibility in product design is a very, very broad term. And in traditional product design, it is often referred to helping people with physical disabilities use a product. But in XR, it's far broader than that. At the moment, the majority of people do not own headsets, they own mobile devices and really basic laptops. And to limit our tool to just people with HMDs would be kind of foolish. So we wanted to create a tool that was accessible to anyone in any device so they can share their work and get feedback in real time. The second problem, probably the most nuanced problem we've had to really solve was to onboard designers to XR design concepts and philosophy. 20 or 30 years ago, designing mobile and web applications was a very, very nuanced process. But today we take designing for the web, 
for granted. And because there's been so many different patterns established over decades, it's really easy. However, with XR design, we are now designing in three dimensions instead of two. And there's a lot of different challenges we have to expose designers to. So this means we have to do a lot of complex onboarding just to get people understanding of what they can do. The third and final problem is that we have to give people superpowers with tools that they may not know that they need yet. And in the market, especially in Unity, these tools can be very, very complex. So we've had to take these incredibly complex tools, complex, 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 and strip them down to their bare essentials and then build them up holistically around contemporary designers. And this has been a really, really challenging thing and a lot of fun. Now, all of these challenges combined have basically led us to start acquiring major companies as partners and as clients. And because of our partnerships, a lot of the design heads of these companies come to me personally and ask who they should hire and if I know anyone. And I have had to say, not really, because there's not that many designers in the field. So they give me a long laundry list of what they want, and I've been keeping an eye out. So let's talk about the million dollar question, which is what are people looking to hire for? Well, there are essentially two camps. There are the mega corporations like Microsoft, Meta, and Apple. And then there is camp B, which is the startups and game studios. Now, each one of these camps look for completely different things. So let's talk about them separately. So for large corporations, um, designers there are looking for UX and product background, a passion for XR, knowledge about um, key XR principles, some 3D knowledge, and the ability to adopt new tools easily. And they really want people in the office. Now, as a product designer for these larger companies, it may be a little bit easier to get in if you live around the Bay Area or New York, but you have to be very, very problem focused and you should have a pretty strong UX background. Now, these places are really, really cool to work for, but fundamentally you will be working on small little slivers of products and you will learn a lot. Okay, so that brings me into camp B, which is mid-size and startup. These people are looking for a generalist. They need people who really know how to use Unity. You also need to know Blender very, very well. Also, the ability to know C Sharp and some coding will be incredibly powerful for you. And on top of that, you really should know some general UX principles. Now, working for startups has a lot of benefits. You have a lot more creative freedom, but you will be making a lot less money than working at large corporations. However, if you're working for startups, they are more likely to allow you to work from home. So this may be better for all, a lot of people, okay? So that brings me to what I would be looking to hire. Um, I'm a little bit trickier of a nut to crack. Um, there's essentially three or four things I'm looking for. However, you don't need to match every one of them except for the first, and that is a hunger to learn and a hunger for problem solving and XR. Now, I have a lot of people come to me asking help with their portfolios, and a lot of the things they show me are very, very pretty, but they don't really have any structure in problem solving. Instead, the problem becomes XR, and a tool should never be the problem. Fundamentally, I just want someone who is hungry, who practices their craft as much as possible, and is trying to solve hard problems that plague humanity. Number two, I need people who know how to use Blender in 3D in general. If you don't know how to create things in 3D software, it's gonna be a problem. And not just any 3D software, things like Spline and all these other 3D design tools are not applicable. These tools are not meant for 3D pipelines. They are meant for some one-off stuff for maybe agencies or stuff like that. You need to fundamentally understand how to unwrap, box model, um, create materials, and manage assets. This is such an incredible skill set to have underneath your belt. And if you don't know how to do this now, you should probably start. The next thing I need is someone who is product oriented and has UX experience. Now, this is really, really hard for a lot of early designers to have, but you don't need to have a shitload of product release. You just need to understand how to talk about problems. And a lot of designers don't know how to do that, especially when they're young. And finally, the last trait I want is that I need people who are hungry enough to spend their free nights and weekends working on the craft. It doesn't have to be just in 3D or in XR. It has to be, it can be any craft at all. And I really want individuals who are working in a physical medium. So if you're in the pottery, you're in the painting, you're in the sculpture, any of those things would be incredibly beneficial. And the reason is it's because it shows that you're passionate about the 3D medium and you're passionate about creating things with your hands. A lot of people like to go to work, 
you clock off, play video games, you know, watch TV with their significant other. That's awesome. No judgment on you if you like to do that. But I'm looking for someone who will work 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. every day if they can. I know that sounds harsh, but it's kind of what I want. Now, if all of this stuff seems incredibly overwhelming to you, don't fret. You have time to build up these skills and start getting your stuff out there. But I wanna give you some advice to actually get you started. First and foremost, start learning XR design theory and design. And this means doing a lot of tutorials or taking online classes. Now, I wanna make this very, very clear and I may piss off some um, online schools, but fundamentally, if you're spending more than $500 on online schools, don't do it. Online schools are great. They are a great place to get, you know, your foot in the door. But at the end of the day, um, certificates do not mean anything. It's all about what you put in there and who you meet at the schools and how you build your community. Let me state this to you again. Certificates mean nothing. Don't spend more than $500 and build a community. The majority of money you spend on online classes goes to admin fees. They often don't pay their teachers very well and no one in my industry is looking for a certificate. If you come to me or anyone else in the world with a certificate in XR Design, we will not give a shit. Fundamentally, you have to come to us with the work, okay? I hope that's not too harsh. If you spend a lot of money like me, good for you, but I don't give a shit. The next bit of advice is that you need to build, ship, and repeat over and over and over again. You need to put your concepts in your mind on display on social media, and you need to do it over and over and over again. You can't just have a single case study. You can't just release a couple of things and walk into a job. It's not gonna happen. You have to let yourself be known and you can't be afraid of releasing bullshit, okay? If you haven't created anything in XR before, that's fine. Take a box, put it in a room, and that's how you start. You may not wanna release the box, on social media, or maybe you do and just say, I created a box and then keep releasing stuff to better your craft and your reach. But I guarantee you, if you start releasing stuff and start experimenting and start sharing with a community, that's gonna help you a lot. And talking about community, if you want to get better and get hired at your craft, join an online or physical community in XR Design. Now, there's a lot of us in the world, but we're really, really spread out. So I would highly suggest joining an, a Discord channel like the XRD Discord, link down below, and start talking to people and joining different events and really picking people's brains. You know, a lot of us are online just waiting for people to come in and ask questions so we can help them. So we're there to help you learn. So to reiterate everything, practice, build shit, release stuff. Don't spend more than $500 on schools. Certificates mean nothing and join a community. Practice, build friends. Yeah, practice building friends. That seems pretty simple. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little off the cuff. Um, I've learned a lot of lessons, a lot of hard lessons about creating a vlog and hopefully it's not terrible. So if you like this kind of stuff, let me know with a like, comment, and subscribe down below. Um, if you wanna learn how to build XR shit, um, link up above to a bunch of awesome tutorials I made. Oh. Join the Discord and until next time everyone, take care and plus minus.